Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE Physics Revision video. Today we're going to be going through the concept of logic gates and the dangers of electricity. So here is the syllabus content that you guys need to be aware of. 4.4 Digital Electronics and 4.5 The Dangers of Electricity. So Digital Electronics. Uh, a digital system includes an input sensor and a processor circuit which controls the voltage to an output device. So you always have an input and you've got an output. And the logic gate basically controls uh, what the output is compared to the input. And so therefore the processor circuit is consists uh, basically consists of a series of logic gates and these logic gates respond to small voltages which are either on or off. They're the digital signals, they respond to them. So they do not respond to analog signals and the difference between an analog signal and a digital signal is that an analog signal varies continuously in amplitude whereas a digital signal only has two states, right? It's either high or low or on or off or one or zero, you get the point. And so if you take a look at the diagram here, the analog signal has this, these waves that so you can always see that the amplitude is continuously changing over time, whereas the digital signal, it only has two states. It's got the high or upper one state or the lower off zero state, as you can see. So it's only got these two states um, and it sort of varies between those two. So logic gates transform a digital input voltage into an output and uh, that depends on the type of logic gate that you are using. Okay, so the input voltages are given as one or zero normally, or you could call it on or off as well. Uh, for, the, for, for the sake of simplicity, we'll, we'll call that uh, in numbers one and zero being the two states. And you know the, the input and output voltages of these logic gates can be represented on a truth table. And depending on what sort of logic gate you're using, uh, the output, depending on the input, is different. Okay, so you've got these, uh, five logic gates that you need to know and uh, we'll take a look at these three first okay so the not gate gives an output voltage that is always opposite to the input and so if you look at this truth table uh, a represents uh, the input and it's only got one input uh, and y is the output okay so all logic gates have an output unit and uh, some logic gates only have a single input uh, like the not gate but uh, other gates, um, other logic gates have, you know, multiple inputs, uh, entry points, right? So, you know, for a NOT gate, you can see that if you have a signal of 1 at A, the input, then the Y output will always be 0, and vice versa, if you get 0 as the input, you'll get 1 as the output because it always reverses, or it, the, the output is always the opposite of the input. Pretty simple. The AND gate only gives an output if the input A and B are both 1. So if you have any situation where out of the two inputs, A and B, if they're, you know, 0 and 1, or 1 or 0, whatever, as long as they're not both 1, then it's going to give you no output, right? It has to be uh, 1 for both A and B in order for the AND gate to give you an output of 1. The OR gate gives an output if the input A or input B is 1. So, you know, as long as A or B have an input voltage of 1, then it'll give you an output voltage of 1. And uh, if, if both A and B signals are 0, then again, you, you're going to get a output voltage of 0. So that can all be shown in this truth table, and you just need to know that. Um, now, the NAND gate is basically just the opposite of an AND gate, right? So if you've got the truth table for an AND gate here, Basically, a NAND gate is the complete opposite of that. So instead of being uh, the output uh, being given out if the input A and B are both 1, it's the opposite of that now, so that uh, if you have any sort of input between uh, A, or I suppose if you, if you have the inputs of A and B being both 1, that's when you get no output for a NAND gate. Um, but any other situation, you'll actually get an output, as you can see in the truth table. So the most simple way of doing this is just making sure you know what an AND gate does and an OR gate does. And for both NAND gates and NOR gates, it's you just completely reverse the the process. So the inputs might be the uh, the same, but the outputs will be different. And so I would say that the main things that you should know is the these three here. And if you know those three off by heart and the truth tables associated with these logic gates, then the NAND gate and the NOR gate should be easy because, again, 
you just need to know that it's the opposite. And you can easily tell because nor uh, is just n added to the or, okay? And nand is just n added to the and, and that n basically just stands for the fact that uh, they're, they're sort of on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So moving on to electrical hazards. Uh, there are three main hazards that you have to know of. We've got uh, damaged insulation, uh, and of course you should already know that electrocution can result in death and it is very dangerous. And so all electrical wires are insulated. And uh, you should be familiar with what an insulator is. And uh, so a damaged insulation can therefore be hazardous because then it may allow electricity to flow or leak and result in electrocution if uh, anyone were to sort of touch and uh, get exposed to the electricity that is flowing through. Um, overheaping cables, uh, you know, that's sort of the idea behind that is if there is too much temperature in these cables and they overheat, then the wire can actually sort of the insulation on the wire can start melting and it can result in a fire and you can you know you never want a fire and it can be dangerous as well and damp conditions finally the electrical resistance of the human body basically decreases significantly when wet okay so wet conditions along with unsafe handling of various electrical appliances may lead to extremely large currents passing through the human body and that can of course be detrimental. So therefore that leads us to the idea of safety circuit components. So a fuse is a thin piece of wire basically designed to carry a set maximum electrical current. So any higher current that passes through that uh, you know uh, exceeds that maximum level, the fuse will basically just melt from the heat. When it melts, it basically breaks the circuit and then therefore stops the current from flowing and it is uh, an important safety feature in a lot of uh, different circuits. Circuit breakers similarly basically prevent excessive current passing through a particular circuit. It is an automated switch okay, which interrupts current flow when abnormally high current is detected. How does it do this? Well, a current in a coil over here will magnetize the iron core which attracts the iron rocker. So through the concepts of electromagnetism, the iron core will become magnetized, it'll become a magnet, and so you've got this iron rocker here which is in contact with the other metal over here to close the circuit. But uh, as soon as the iron ore gets magnetized to a certain extent, because as larger currents pass through, the magnetic pull will be stronger because it gets more strongly magnetized. At some point when the current gets too high, then the iron rocker will be attracted to the magnet enough for that to break the circuit open. And when that happens, then the circuit will no longer have electricity flowing through it. And lastly, earthing metal cases, right? So an electric shock can occur if a live wire inside any sort of electrical appliance came loose and uh, touched the metal casing in which the appliance is within. Um, and a metal is of course a conductor, so if anyone were to touch the metal casing then they may indeed be electrocuted. So to prevent this from happening, the earth terminal can be connected to the metal casing. So in case the electricity passes through to the metal, case then uh, the electricity or the current will pass through the earth instead of the human body and therefore keeping whoever is touching it safe. You can see on this diagram here uh, if the casing is earth then the person does not get electrocuted which is good however if uh, it was not earth then you know if, if the metal casing were to have some sort of electricity passing through it because there was a fault in the circuit or something like that, then the electricity would pass straight through the human being and that would not result in a good, uh, that, that would not result in uh, anything good for whoever that is. So that's basically it for this video. Um, we will be discussing some very important details of electromagnetism in the next video we're going to be specifically talking about uh, electromagnetic forces which is a fairly big topic so um, for now go to freeexamacademy.com uh, I've got full notes there and I've just finished uploading every 
uh, every topic for physics. Uh, more resources on Patreon, so check that out. Otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.